Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how to do extended bodies. There are of course many many different ways of doing them but I will teach you how I do them and in particular these um, deer hair extended bodies because I have gotten a lot of questions about how I make them and uh, it will be like in three parts with the third uh, part uh, also be uh, I will also show you how to do this completely unnecessary technique of mixing colors or mixing the deer hair in the extended bodies uh, but we will start with uh, this uh, here because it's, it's foam and a feather on top but it's exactly the same technique so it's easier to start with this so um, I, I will just use a regular straight needle you can have a, a bent one if you if you want another shape but it's the same technique so I'll use this for now and I always use um, GSP thread, 50 denier, because it's uh, really slippery, this GSP thread. And we're going to use that to our advantage when we slide the body off the needle. So just attach the thread and then we'll have a piece of foam. It's it's slightly tapered uh, and we'll attach that underneath the needle yeah. something like that and now we have our base because you always need a base for um, for these bodies otherwise they just collapse when you take them off the needle, you can't just put dubbing on a needle and then pull it off you have to have a base and I keep getting questions if I use like mono thread or something but I don't, I just use, in this case it's the foam itself and in the deer hair case it's the deer hair itself but attach the foam uh, and place the th uh, thread where you want the first segmentation to be fold it back and create a segmentation check if yeah that looks okay and for the top part I will just use a small marabou feather like that so we have a tail and for a fishing fly um, you could just go just spiral forward like this and get a nice body but this tutorial is to show you how to get straight segmentations without the thread showing so to do that you wind the thread underneath the body so the first wrap is tightly um, to the segmentation but underneath and then you just move the thread underneath until you're in the place where you want the next segment to be just make a loose wrap here and check if that looks good this foam is a bit thick like that and and um, when you're happy just tighten it make a couple of turns and there you have a straight straight segmentation and no thread in in that segment again fold the upper part back and the lower part and put the thread underneath and just keep doing that until you're 
at the next point where you want the segmentation to be. Put the thread on top again. Check. Oh, that was a bit fat. Foam is, yeah, I can pull it to make it a bit less fat. I don't really use foam that, of, that often, but for this technique, it's it's an easy way to show where the thread goes. So there we have another segment moving up to get another. Again, you wind the thread underneath the body. And let's make a last segment for this body here. Like that. And make loose turns and so you can check how oh, does it look okay that's even more important when we come to deer hair but for this foam and feather it it doesn't really matter that much but it's really important when we get to deer hair and once we're happy with that and we have uh, the, the length we want just whoops, whip finish at that last segmentation Cut the thread and slide this thing off the needle. Oops. Oh, huh. so there's the body of the needle. Okay, so now we'll move over to the deer hair part. And I often use deer belly hair for, for these extended bodies because they tend to have quite long fibers. And you, want, you need quite long fibers depending on how long the body is, obviously. But because uh, you need that foundation. And when I do extended deer hair bodies, the, the deer hair itself is the foundation, so to speak. But we'll start with GSP thread, just like before. And for this, I will have some tail fibers. So we'll just take three fibers and attach them first off, because then they will stick out from the middle of the body. And I will actually fold these over to make sure that they stay there when I when I pull the fly off the needle, pull the body like that. That actually helps build the taper to the to the body as well. And um, when I do these tails, I use some small, small, small amount of super glue on top just to secure the thread to that uh, tail. Otherwise, it tends to slip right into the body. And then we'll use oops, wait, stacked. deer hair, also deer belly hair. I've chosen yellow so it has a nice contrast to the thread I'm going to use in a minute. So attach the deer hair with two loose turns. Oops, slipped right there, right? But once it's distributed around the needle Check that it is. Yeah. Can pull it and tie it down all along the needle. Like that. Because this is now your base of the of the body. That's why you need kind of a long long fibers. I accidentally shifted the place in that when I attached the 
yellow here. Let's check that. Yeah, no, it looks nice. So once it's like that, it, the yellow part is on. I'll just make a whip finish. And cut that thread. Now I'll use like a dark brown, it's a uni 8O, just to so, so you guys will be able to see the process of making the segments. So I'll place the thread where I want the first segment to go. I can remove these. And then we'll use, this is a dubbing needle with a hollow end to it. You can use like a straw or anything that's hollow, a pencil or whatever. And find the, uh, find the needle and make reverse, reverse all these fibers except for the tails. So you can just oops, try to pick them out. Once you have the yellow reversed, like that. So reverse all these fibers and then make one and a half turn. Loosely, don't don't uh, push this at all, because once you're here, you can now check the all the fibers. Are they straight? Are they the way you want? Is it one crooked fiber that you might want to stretch so it fits? And when it looks good, you uh, add one more turn and gently pull. There you have your first segment segment and now it's important now you have to decide where on this body you want the shifts from on top of the fibers and underneath to go because these shifts if you use like a high contrast the body is yellow and the thread is um, uh, dark brown there will be a high contrast you will be able to see just those stitches so to say so make sure you do them all in the same place on the body uh, so they're all in the same place that way you can cover them if you want like a wing on top of this body you can place them facing upward so the wing covers the stitches and then it's like uh, the uh, first body that we made now the thread have to go under all the fibers so you have to lift the fibers and this is the tricky part. Make sure you make such a, such a, a tight, a tight, um, the tightest possible um, shift you can make. And with a dubbing needle, you can pull, um, let it slide along the thread, and then you can remove all the fibers. And make sure the first wrap around is as tight as possible to the segmentation. And the second wrap, you can start to go up the needle. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you um, you will end up with the you will be able to see the thread uh, be tilted a bit. Uh, you will probably see this uh, on, see that on this fly. And when you find the next place to Place the same place the next segment. You make sure the thread comes out from underneath in the same place where you where it went in the, um, before. So once it's there, stroke all the fibers back again. One and a half. Loose, 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 loose. Turn. Check. Does it look alright? 
for the fibers the way I want. This segmentation, for example, is I think it's a bit thin, but whatever. The fibers look quite all right. So one more turn and then gently tighten. And then you can make another turn if you want. Here you can decide decide um, how thick the th segmentations, uh, how uh, how you want them basically. And then again, you have to make the thread go underneath. So pull out, stroke the fibers back again, and make the thread as tight as possible to the segmentation, but underneath. What's this? Like that. Keep turning. It, it really helps to have a rotation vise. I'm, I'm, I'm always using the dubbing needle to get rid of the fibers. It's quite handy. What is this? So once you're happy with the, the placement where you want the next segment to be, make sure the thread comes out in the same place where it went in. Stroke the fibers back, loosely, loosely, one and a half turn. And here you make sure that the fibers are the way the you want them to be. One more loose turn and gently pull. So here you can see the thing I was talking about. Right here you can see where the thread um, shifts from going on top to underneath the fibers. So that's what you want. You want the, that to be as as invisible, invisible as humanly possible, humanly possible. Oh, you have to excuse my English. But let's make another segmentation. So in the same place where and let's say that was the last segment. Then we do a whip finish. And you cut the thread and now you can see this side here has all the stitches so to say they're all here so if you want this to be on top you can cover that with a wing and no one will see that and of course this is for uh, unnecessary the fish won't care at all but when you're done gently Loosen the body from the needle. Gently, gently. Come on. And there you have the body. And I usually put a bit of glue right here, like a thin UV glue or something, just to secure the, uh, the tails a bit. But this is... Um, of course all in yellow if you in, at the start place one color on top and one color on the bottom uh, with all the fibers you of course get a um, two different colors of the of the uh, body and you can also put the whole bunch underneath and like a cdc feather on top uh, or or you can fold the deer hair on top and have dubbing underneath you can vary this as just as you want but this is the deer hair basic and now i will show you the hardcore version where we change colors of the deer hair and we will work with a really thin thread as well okay now we will do the hardcore stuff here. This is a technique to um, 
to have multiple colors or stack their hair if you want on an extended body like this. And I've prepared a bit with the, I've done just four strands in a different color here because I wanted to show you the segmentations on the head there. Uh, and I'm using a 10 denier thread because so it's super 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 thin but it's still slippery so we can slide it off when we're done so I've prepared these four strands here and then we have a stacked belly belly hair here it's chartreuse just to have a nice contrast just loosely on top of that and distribute it around the needle yeah something like that pull gently with this thin thread so we don't cut the fibers Like that, and then with the with the hollow thing, you reverse everything. And like before, one and a half turn loosely, 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 because you don't want to want to uh, um, tighten it yet, because then you won't be able to change anything because when it's loose like this I can adjust individual fibers here to make the head segmentation or not segmentation but coloration the way I want it so check that the fibers are straight and if there are some fibers that are for this fiber, for instance, is a bit sloppy. If you can find that, you can just pull it, tighten that, so that looks looks nice and dandy. And this is of course completely unnecessary, but it's fun. Well, something like that. We don't have all day. One more turn and gently tighten and now we will tie this whole bunch Come on, down like that oh we might we might put some legs on here yes we'll do that wait a minute just for fun yeah legs and now we'll use uh, another color okay so now we'll try to put these on top here like two loose turns maybe there some under fur don't want that okay whatever and try to distribute these these fibers all around the body while the thread is loose like this and now we need this to be in the exact same place where the other segment was something like that Mm, 
there and then you pull all the fiber reverse all the fibers oh like that and gently one and a half loose 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 turns check are the fibers the way you want them yes one more turn and tighten gently and there you have that second segment in another color we missed a I missed a bit there because you can see the previous thread so I should have gone a bit uh, further up with the thread but you get the basic and then with this thin thread we're gonna do the exact same thing as before we're gonna lift some fibers up to make the thread go underneath so do that all the way first first wrap should be tight to the segmentation then we can start to go up the body And in the same place where we went in with the thread, we go out. So reverse all the fibers again. One and a half loose, loose, loose turns. Oops. And then pull the fibers. So they're all straight or the way you want them. Check that they're all right. Straighten them. And then one more turn and gently pull. There we have another segment. And this time you won't be able to show where the thread went from going on top to underneath because it's so thin. And if you do that really careful you you will never be able to tell where and also if you want to pimp this a bit more you can uh, add uh, for example a peacock hurl like say here in this segment here just attach that and cut off the rest let's say we will make one one of say two turns here we can have a little extra flavor to the body like this one for example And then the exact same way we're gonna hide the thread underneath the body and gently tighten and you can do other things here if you if you want to you can split the thread and put some thin thin dubbing in that and and um, put some dubbing in the segments like like this one for example or you can do you can do whatever you want but that's the the, uh, the technique of it and when you're done just whip finish and that's a fantasy body for sure but I will show you one more thing when you're uh, done with the body and you want it uh, on a hook on a hook can remove the needle grab a hook and you can 
cut all this this extra material away if you if you're not going to use it makes it easier to see what you're doing so let's say you want this on this hook here and you want it to go backwards then I use the last segment that we did and I insert this hook into the body and make it come out of the last segment oh it was a bit off here but you can see like that so when we later attach this here in the vise we can just slide this up oh you see it was completely wasted here and then you attach this body onto the onto the hook basically oh it looks like it says save me this tutorial is too long but anyway that's how I do it so thanks for watching and I hope you hope you learned something at least so thanks for watching bye